Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are having a few technical difficulties, but we're going to move ahead and record. So I am going to pass it to our um, facilitators tonight. Hi, um, I'm Ellen Brooks. I'm one of your facilitators. We just want to welcome you. Um, if you would like to make use of that chat, um, there's an emotion wheel here. If you don't mind just sharing your name, preferred pronouns, how you're feeling, um, we'll give you a moment to get orientated, but we will jump in pretty quickly. Leah had good advice in the chat um, about the passcode team. Telling us that you're happy. This is a, a great emotion to be experiencing as we are all bearing through and um, so excited to be here too with the technical difficulties. I'm feeling optimistic about our conversation. I'm excited about it. All right, um, so tonight we'd like to uh, welcome our executive committee member, uh, Duff Martin, and he is a middle school teacher from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and uh, he specializes in seventh and eighth graders, but has also taught at a, an alternative high school. Uh, Ron was the first Native American president of the Wisconsin Education Association Council, so that's special. And um, we look forward to your land acknowledgement. Um, he is a champion of um, inclusion and acceptance, and he has over 20 years in the classroom, um, including the development of a transition program for kids coming into middle school. Uh, he is um, has a lot of interests. <laughs> he has a lot of social justice interests. He likes uh, school uh, school safety, diversity, restorative justice, and advocating for uh, um, the eradication of institutional racism. And he also is a champion of new educators, uh, ESP, educators of color, and str strengthening local unions. So welcome, uh, Duff. And if you would like to... Uh, share a few thoughts and do our land acknowledgement tonight. Excellent. Thanks, Jennifer. And it's so good to be with all of you. Um, Buju, hello. That's the language of my people, the Anishinaabe or Chippewa Ojibwe people from northern Wisconsin. And I know that they also inhabit lands in Michigan, Minnesota, mm -hmm. as well as uh, a good majority of uh, Canada. So we begin acknowledging that we meet on the traditional lands of many of our nation's first people. Many of you from our, are from all parts of our NEA family in this great nation of ours. So I happen to be from Wisconsin and being a, a Native American uh, as well, uh, Anishinaabe, I'm going to talk just briefly about the Chippewa or the Ojibwe people, my people. Um, I think tonight is an incredible opportunity for all of you as I think about the title of this uh, particular uh, uh, learning experience. I think of my grandmother, who was so very important to me in my upbringing. My grandmother is a product of the boarding schools. The boarding schools were not necessarily well revered by most of the Native people. She was taken from her family at age five um, and was uh, not allowed to speak her language. Um, practice any of the traditional ways in which her people um, did things and was um, forced to learn a language and a way of life that was not what she was raised on. It was tough for her. She lost her older brother in the boarding school experience. She returned home a broken woman. She didn't share with us any of her Native American history or culture until late in her life. She said that was the greatest regret of her entire life was that she waited until she was on her deathbed to really tell the story, to tell our story so that we understood the half of our family that was Native American. Today, that is what I plan to do, continue to learn about my family history, to learn about the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa and Ojibwe. And it's interesting why we have three names. Anishinaabe is the name we call ourselves. It's an Algonquin word, which means original people. Now, the others, uh, when I say the others, our brothers and sisters, the Potawatomi, the Fox, the Sioux, they called us 
Ojibwe, which means people of the puckered moccasin. Um, and if you know anything about Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, this is a tough time of year. We have lots of snow. Sometimes it's wet snow. The puckered moccasin helped to keep my ancestors' feet dry. And that's why they were the people of the puckered moccasin. Well, the French fur trappers and traders, they didn't understand what the Fox Potawatomi were saying and thought they were saying Ojibwe, not Chippewa, Ojibwe, or uh, they thought they were saying Chippewa, not Ojibwe, and thus Chippewa stuck, and that's how we're federally recognized. So um, we are called on as all people to learn about our Native American ancestors, past, present, and future. So uh, it's so, so good to be with you all. I am excited to be here as I understand this is the third webinar of our national series for the school year. Um, so all of the webinars this year use the NEA leadership competencies, social emotional uh, intelligence. That's really incredibly um, important because that's just a relatively new one of the competency frameworks. And so this is exciting as a member of the NEA executive committee. Uh, the webinar is one way the NEA is trying to support members in their professional work. Members are our experts and all of our NEA national webinars are led by experienced members and staff. I got to meet your two uh, presenters before all of you got on. And I know they're gonna just uh, do a, an incredible job. Um, at the end, we're gonna ask that you fill out a short evaluation um, to uh, help us identify topics that you might be interested. Um, and, and, and if anything, we missed the mark on something here. So on behalf of President Pringle and the entire executive committee, I wanna welcome you to this webinar series. And with that, I would like to turn it over to your incredible leaders, Ms. Ellen Brooks from the great state of Michigan and Arise Colbert, Ms. Colbert from the great state of Iowa, both neighbors of me. So Ellen, Arise, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, Duff, and, and thank you for the introduction. So uh, as Duff said, my name is Arise Colbert and I am a district equity coach in um, the Cedar Rapids Community School District. I am the local president of the Cedar Rapids Education Association, and I'm extremely excited to be here with you and with my partner, Ellen. I've already forgotten all my Zoom etiquette in like the 10 minutes since I've been back in the school. Uh, I'm, a, I'm Ellen Brooks. I'm a school improvement coach. I work for Monroe Public Schools. I'm a part of the Michigan Education Association and I do some work with the NEA because I'm proud to be a teacher and support other teachers. So I'm very glad um, to be here tonight. So thanks for having us. And we'd like to know a little bit more about you as we get started tonight. So we've placed an item here to give us a visual to get us started. And what we'd like you to do is select one of those items off the wheel, if you would, your choice, and share as much as you'd like. But we'd like you to pick one of those and also tell us who you are and what you do in your local areas. I would say I have a I have an aptitude for this um, age of Google Slides. I learned quick and fast during the pandemic that the piecemeal sort of usage of slides and timers in my first grade classroom and my sixth grade classroom translated really well um, to be able to being able to build these visuals and it, it got me really interested in accessibility and it kind of opened me up as an educator to think about um, a lot of that like elements of color and spacing and my students that have different visual and sensory needs and um, so I think a good a good strength slash aptitude of mine is being able to um, build slide decks, <laughs> if that is anything worth bragging about. I hope you like this one or I'm going to be put to shame. All right. So Mike joined us in the chat and he picked personality. You know, mm -hmm. from the beginning, Mike, you've been showing us some things about your personality. I'm so glad that um, you are a social studies um, high school teacher. That's uh, you work with some great kids and at a really critical time in their lives. We have any other folks who are willing to put pop in the chat an element of themselves that they are willing to tell us and tell us who they are and what they do? 
The role thing is really helpful too, so that we can try to tailor our conversation to meet needs that you may have. We're willing to talk generically. We know that you're seasoned educators or new educators that, you know, you've done a lot of work to be where you are. So, um, but if you do help us understand your role, we may be able to be more specifically inclusive to your needs and your demographic. Leah has said something beautiful about her joy and collaboration and um, that's what it's all about. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Babe, I hope to be you one day <laughs> from time to time. Um, but thank you for being a part of tonight. Um, we continue to, to amplify the fact that learning never ends. And so thanks for being a part of, part of things tonight. As people are continuing to put things in the chat to help us to better understand um, their roles and what they've been, um, you know, empathizing with. Uh, we just wanted to put those session goals up there so we can reiterate why we're here and honor why you're here. So um, we are going to make sure that we do some work with some real assessment tools, um, those uh, social emotional learning competencies. We're going to be exploring self-awareness as the first of those competencies. Every rubric you see that has anything to do with SEL, self-awareness comes first. Um, so this is really going to be a wonderful dive into that and we hope to give you some things you can take with you and some references for a deeper dive later on so uh, we'd really love to give to you some practical skills to support you students and colleagues in that in that ongoing educational journey we all hold so dear so um, thank you again for being here tonight so that brings us to the agenda and so we want to just talk about our intentionality around the design for tonight. And the first thing we want to spend time around is what do we exactly mean when we say self-awareness? We also wanna talk about how self, the self-assessment in Castle can help us grow and learn as educational professionals. And then we wanna tie it together with this concept of around and exploring more about emotional intelligence and how we can better practice self-awareness. Ellen, you wanna talk a little bit about those resources? Yeah, so um, everything that you see in the uh, slideshow that is blue and underlined is a link that you can click on that we'll try to put in the chat for you. But when we get down to the end and it's just our information to contact us again, after that, every slide that comes next are um, those great, some ideas for professional reads, all kinds of websites, uh, further parts of the assessment tool that we're going to be doing um, tonight. So uh, when you have a copy of this slide deck or you share it with others, which we hope you do, this is for you, um, that you have that ability to go in and find even more things because an hour just simply isn't enough. That's right. But we're glad you are here with us for this hour. And so to further explain the purpose of our hour, um, Ellen and I wanted to talk about these two frameworks. So looking first at the um, NEA leadership competency framework, what we want to highlight is, as Duff had referenced earlier, the social emotional intelligence is a relatively new competency added to the framework. It, obviously the work is anew, but the emphasis around it was something NEA made apparent as they updated our competency list. And notice its placement, its placement is key. Um, it's centered for a reason. As we look at all the other competency areas where we wanna build our skill set, we have to do that check in our social emotional work. They all play a part in developing our skill sets as leaders in NEA. And the other model we have on the right side of your screen is straight from Castle, which is an amazing resource that we're going to go through today um, as one of our sort of uh, go to 
just fonts of knowledge. So you can see that that, that social emotional learning and what that means has a lot of branches. Um, so we're focusing on self-awareness, but those pieces of self-management, decision, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, social awareness, they look separate, but they're very intermingled. So we'll do our absolute best to focus on self-awareness today and show you some more of these tools and things we can do to work on our own self-awareness and um, those around us. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, and to get started, we're going to take a look as if we were opening up our competency book from NEA and able to look at the levels as it breaks down. So we want to um, emphasize the fact that tonight's purpose is to really focus at a level one, a foundational level, as we look at self-awareness. And so what we've captured here is an image of what the competency looks like and how we're guiding our thoughts and processes. So this is where our brainstorming and our work tonight is gathered around. And so again, if you uh, need access and would like to take a closer look at it, um, the link was just provided in the chat box. And uh, that model we're gonna be talking about, Castle. And if you're someone who's familiar with Castle, you can throw that in the chat so we know there's some other people that have experience there. Um, but, uh, the great thing about Castle is that it's these purposeful deep dives. So when we're talking about self-awareness, there's something that we really mean. And what we mean is that ability to understand one's own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how they influence behavior across contexts. So these capacities are, are really difficult to define in oneself because they're so intermingled. But strengths and limitations, confidence and purpose, these are all things that help us to, um, you know, try to put into words and have that framework for what we what we identify as our social identity, our cultural linguistic assets. You heard beautiful um, Ojibwe, right? Anishinaabe from uh, an actual member of that community. That's what we're talking about. Um, demonstrating that honesty and integrity, your feelings, self-efficacy, growth mindset, all of these are tied up in our ability to really understand ourselves, and when we're working with others to try to see um, into them as well, which is which is gorgeous. So, uh, Castle, um, I'm going to put that link in the chat now for you. If you haven't opened it, you can open it and, and take a look as we talk, or you can wait till the end. And so, because of that, we really wanted to target just the self awareness piece of the social emotional intelligence aspect of our work and we are um, targeting tonight really that self-awareness um, another way i like to refer to it is we're really talking about mirror work you know that ability to to take a deeper look at who we are our values our sense of self our um areas in where we engage with others from our own reflection and personal lens even looking and, and thinking about our work around social sorry, not social, I wanted to say um, racial and social justice. So it's very, very big. And so we're gonna get a small snapshot of how to kind of get into that work tonight. Um, if you are someone that is involved in a school district or you're in a classroom, I know that this type of professional development is great, sort of like in that abstract concept, but um, it was important to Aris and I that we tie in the fact that everything we talk about, everything that um, Castle is providing, it's built into these frameworks that we're using all the time, that we're using to try to address gaps, not only academically, but in terms of equity and social justice, all of these things. So if you are working anywhere near a school these days, um, multi-tiered systems of supports, positive behavioral interventionists and supports, I know that um, I was newly crowned PBIS coach in my um, building in my district because it's a it's a huge focus. So we wanted to show you resources taken directly from Castle. Everything we're talking about, it's built into what you're already doing. I think as an educator, I often end up feeling like it's too much all the time and there's always something else and there's not enough arms um, and love and compassion to hold it all and it's exhausting. So we just wanted to show you some of these models that um, reinforce that all of this work that we're talking about is 
directly a part of things you're already doing. So it's really nice to be able to identify those things and say, oh my gosh, yes, I do this. And also, how can I support further initiatives? Um, so there's plenty of resources on CASEL to help you with this. Um, these are some activities that Arisa and I pulled out from cultivating adult SEL and promoting SEL for students. These blue links will um, take you directly to these reflections um, for self reflection and also um, there's a great example from focus area three SEL for students about um, how to sort of guide a discussion it is for uh, secondary folks but there are things for that can be adapted for little people too so don't you worry um, little people teachers we just wanted to make sure oh I opened a link sorry am I back on the slide now everyone sorry um, there's links everywhere I'm link crazy um, uh, and just so that we can um, sort of tie in that that purposeful teacher modeling uh, that we all hold near and dear, um, we're going to look at this model again later on. This is an activity directly from CASEL. Um, these are all uh, examples that a school staff can use to model that self-awareness for their students, um, which is really nice. And uh, we are going to come back to this, but you can see these phrases, right? Like, how do your emotions impact your students? How do we demonstrate that growth mindset? Um, we are people and the more that we're people with our students the more powerful those connections are um, so a lot of what the work that we'll be doing is on our own self-assessment because it's hard to practice building self-awareness in others until we can be self-aware ourselves um, and sort of the last point which arise is going to join me on uh, we don't want you to feel like this has to be a uh, a bought and paid for crazy thing that you have to study for hours, I can statements um, are like the number one way to model, right? Being um, self aware. So, Reese and I found some I can statements, or um, not I can, I statements to um, just remind you that you're probably already doing this good work and the importance of normalizing those complex emotions. So, um, PBS on self-awareness is a great um, uh, resource that the full link is actually later in your slide deck. Maurice? Yeah, and, and it was interesting because as we talked about it, we recognize that we often assume that as our students get older and even as adults, that we don't need those reminders about starting with I. So that again, we um, don't overrepresent groups of people or, or, or collective thoughts, that those thoughts are and emotions and pieces are truly of our own. And so we thought it was important to mention that this is good practice. This is good pedagogy for all ages, pre-K through adults. So um, this is a, a piece that we want to practice and we also want to model here. And you'll hear us often using our own I statements as we talk about our experiences and, and our collective us as we talk about where we're coming with, with the ideas and, and activities we have designed and, and selected for you tonight. And speaking of activity we designed and selected for tonight, uh, we want to come back to how we started. And, and for those of you who jumped in a little late, here's what we did. We put that image up and asked people to select one of the elements as a way in which they would introduce themselves into the chat. And so we don't want you to think you missed out because now we want to come back to it and wanted to share why this was a, a, an approach we had selected as the way to go about this. Um, sometimes it's important to think about what element of self that maybe you are um, spending time with, learning about yourself or you're noticing as you're doing different pieces, whether you're doing it with professional um, life, you're thinking about personal life. And so we wanted to come back and give um, actual definitions as to what the pieces are. Um, it didn't doesn't delay or distract from what we chose, but we wanted to give you some um, relevance or some, some reasons why. So this work again comes from um, coach extraordinaire, Elena Aguilar and her work from her book onward. And we wanted to come back to that. So if you were um, looking at this and recognizing that there were some you knew and some we don't, it's a great example of why self-awareness is such important work for us to do and coming from different elements in different places where we can do that learning is our whole intentionality around our design for tonight. I think also, Arise, that importance of a shared vocabulary and making sure that everybody's coming at it from the same 
view is so critical. Absolutely. So here we'd like to build in a little interaction here. So when we do our self-awareness, we want to think always in terms of strengths and you know what we bring to the table. So would you take a moment as you reflect on the statement here, would you be willing to share in the chat um, some qualities that you have that really help support yourself? Things that are um, good, are things that work for you. And we want you to, again, keep doing that self-work. Try not to think of others yet. Think about those strengths that you bring to the table as you work to make yourself the best you can be each and every day. So take a moment. And if you're willing, you pop it in the chat. We'd appreciate that. Flexibility is a really good one to think about. I think flexibility as a strength is really powerful, not only for yourself, but for others as well. That's a great example of a strength. Ooh, who said organization? Come spend more time with me. I need help. <laughs> Duh, such wisdom. The willingness to give yourself permission to fail and give yourself grace when you need to is a strength that I wish I had a magic wand and could co cultivate in the people around me. I love that. Everything everyone said. I know. Is I'm wonderful. just saying, Ellen, look how quickly people were able to, to come and think from that that strength mindset. That's that's fabulous. End of a long day and we're coming. Yes. <laughs> Not for some of us who had a snow day, not to brag. Um, I am also noticing how these strengths are reminding me of strengths that I wouldn't have recognized. I think I thought of my strength first as something that I'm proud of, but that I'm also learning how to manage because it is taking away from me sometimes. Um, and I noticed a lot of these strengths that made me remind myself that I too do some of those things. So there are strengths that we don't think of right away. And that is part of... Um, that emotional element. So one of the things we're going to be talking about a lot today is actually the emotional piece of self-awareness. Um, emotions are deeply embedded in us. They affect everything that we do. Um, this great image of the lizard brain and the wizard brain. Um, we have a wonderful curriculum in my district called Mind Up, and we have been teaching students, teaching kids um, exactly what it means to have a memory in their hippocampus and to reason with their prefrontal cortex, right? So that green section of the brain, your prefrontal cortex is where you make your decisions um, and you you hide those, those memories and those um, things in that center brain, that hippocampus, when your amygdala goes off and you're stressed or you're worried, you forget how to um, take care of yourself and you, you can be rash. Um, so uh, the idea that when you're building self-awareness, you are also beefing up that front brain where you do your reasoning and that middle of your brain, your hippocampus, where you're building your understanding and you're, you're stashing it for later you're able to better respond to situations and sort of squish down that lizard brain. So some of the work that we're doing is really brain training. We're making ourselves able to make better decisions, even when our lizard brain is crawling at us to fight or flight or whatever we need to do um, to survive. And so to build on that, we really think about the mindfulness it takes to be aware of our emotions and what they're telling us and, and how we're responding. I know many school settings, and particularly in our district, um, there are um, intentional designs in our SEL curriculum to teach and model and practice mindset. And so we want to, to tie that, make that connection again, because that mindfulness helps us with our self-awareness. And as Ellen has already indicated, when we're also aware of where we're at, it helps us again with the reasoning, understanding, and responding that our brain needs to do actively. So with that being said, let's do a mindful check-in right now. At the beginning, and again, we realized this because we had some technical difficulties. So it's really nice because our, our intentionality of the recycling brings us all back to the activities we were um, wanting to be intentional about. Uh, we started with this wheel and we asked people to uh, tell us how they were feeling. So now we're gonna actually have you take a look again at the wheel. And as you're thinking about 
where you're at right now and the fact that you're here and the mindset you have taken on to be present with us, we'd like to take a moment, take two deep breaths. Exhale audibly, please. And we're just gonna pause. How am I feeling right now? Where am I at in my thinking and the activity I have chosen to be a part of tonight? And if you're so willing, put something in the chat. Not to interrupt your thinking, but I do want some of you to check just above your chat box. Make sure that blue box, it's blue for me, says everyone. Some of you are sending your responses just to the hosts, which is perfectly fine if you want them to be private. But if you're looking to share with your fellows, they won't be able to see unless you hit that everyone button. So if your button says hosts and panelists, you're sharing with us and we value and honor and respect that. But if you are hoping to connect with your um, colleagues in the chat, make sure you click on that everyone button. And as you're doing that, I hope you have an opportunity to see where everyone is showing up right now. There are so many powerful emotions and stats of where people are at. It's clear heads, hopeful, joyfully, calm, uh, sorry, joyfully curious, relaxed, calm. content. Oh my gosh, Lori, Arise and I made this whole um, slideshow and I'm still curious about this topic. So um, I'm sorry if you walk away still curious, but hopefully you walk away in that like excited curious and not like, ah, curious. So as we keep saying, this is really all about starting with emotions. As, as we mentioned, this is a huge topic and to provide something tonight that would give us something to give us food for thought and, and a place to continue our thinking. We wanted to talk about and briefly intro, introduce again, another element from Onward's materials about the cycle of an emotion. It doesn't matter on what age and stage we are in life. This is a common human experience. I'm starting with that prompting event. How did I interpret that? Our interpretation is definitely influenced on our social emotional status, but also our cultural lens. What physical response did I notice? What action might I have taken? Did I take that action? And then what was the result of that? And this cycle again can continue based upon my responses and my after effects. And we continue in those pieces. And so that mindfulness we did sometimes helps us break a cycle, make us more aware, and it's often the things we do when many of us are trained to work with students and we talk about de-escalation. We're again, recognizing and working to figure out where someone may be in the cycle of, emo of an emotion. And so this practice and understanding is so important as we become more self-aware, as we often are engaging with other people, we have to step back and look, where am I? And, and how can I um, be more aware of where I am in the cycle and where, where I want to go next and what might pause I might need to take so that I can, first of all, have more awareness and know what I want to do differently or next steps as if I'm ready to assist someone else. The power of context is just essential when we are thinking about um, ourselves and that self-awareness piece. A way to go about it is to take a look at our, our emotional intelligence. And so um, in our work for pre preparation, we found this particular tool. And before we get to the tool, we wanted to, again, explain what its target happens to be. And so it looks at the four components is listed here on our slide. And we also want to, again, indicate its connection to Castle. So once again, our, our mind and our plans here is to, uh, again, tie our frameworks together. And so it's a... Um, it's a tool, it's an opportunity to help us do 
the self-awareness work that we are encouraging you to take part of either tonight and in the future as you continue to work on this on your own. The next slide, and we apologize for the tiny print, but we wanted to give a range of um, statements that the uh, assessment provides for you. And so if you have a moment and um, if you're not, if you're like me and you have to you know, do something to again, adjust to make sure that it's uh, uh, readable, uh, uh, my able is in here about the uh, wear and tear that I put on my own eyesight for the amount of things that I work with. We wanted to give you a chance to kind of scan down the list. And if, it's, if at all possible, are there any of these statements right now that may resonate maybe one or two something that you know that you're connecting and thinking yeah that that's something that i do think about myself or i'm more curious about and would want to do more um, work around the tool itself would guide you and have you do some more um, identification but we wanted to give some sample from what that tool provides Leave it on for I think it's always interesting when I look at an appraisal like this, Arise, I start thinking about that chain, right? Like this one makes me think of these other things. It's like a, a domino for me. A domino in a good way, as you can domino in a good way. Unpack some of the, the things to become yeah. curious about and start to, to do a little bit more digging. I like I like how you describe that. So I see we had both David and Kelly identify um, a, a similar comment about stress in this mm -hmm. in the stressful situation. And thank you both for popping that in the chat. I noticed right away, I'm good at describing my feelings and good is so subjective, but I also think about all those times when I'm with someone else and they're trying to express a feeling to me and I feel a strength of mine might be um finding that common ground and having a shared or a similar experience something that can try to bridge that gap to show that we have something in common in that experience it's making me think of that well i'm gonna say andrea and i have one in common um, my feelings help me get take away all the other distractions and helps me narrow in on what's important and i'm i'm glad she shared that because that's that's the one for me Absolutely. Thank you for, for being brave and sharing the things from that tool that you uh, could connect to. So Ellen, do you want to lead us to the, this part of the chat? Oh yeah. Um, the, uh, the work we're asking you to do is to think about this webinar and the work we've done so far and just share how a response to a question like the one you just saw in the previous slide might help you better understand your own emotional intelligence, not in that situation or this situation, but in this moment in time. So we just want you to reflect and you're welcome to put something in the chat if you'd like, or we'd just like to take a moment to have you think about right here, right now. We've asked you to think about how you're feeling. We've asked you to think about um, an emotional uh, cycle and those, those appraisal questions. Um, just take a moment, share in the chat if you're willing to understand um, your, to think about your understanding of, of you and your emotional intelligence right now in this second. It's a big question. The reason why we're asking you to think about this moment and this work is um, just like from our modeling examples from earlier on, when you can identify strengths and limitations, you can recognize what you have a hard time with, you can recognize um, where you can support yourself and others. These are ways that we can not only build our own self-awareness, but help others. Um, 
my one of our favorite things from this competency modeling example was was the second orange box noticing events and ideas and how your body responds to them self awareness and emotions. They are not just in your headspace, they are physiological. Um, when you're feeling stressed and upset, you're not digesting properly, it deals with heart rate, all of those things. So being able to identify not just the conceptual feeling, but the actual bodily response is such an important piece of modeling that self-awareness um, in this, in our very sort of <laughs> psychological space this evening. Um, another self-assessment tool that we'd like you to have some time with today um, goes back to Castle. So this is one of Castle's personal assessment tools, and they actually have many. This is just one of them. And in the guide to the tool itself, it asks you to identify patterns of strengths and weaknesses, but Aris and I cross that out. I don't enjoy the word weakness because I think it's so wrapped in this context of, of uh, failing. Um, and like Duff said, right, like being able to allow oneself to fail um, and, and being gracious in that realm, we decided to change that word to challenge. Um, I love the word challenge, uh, probably because I'm an overachiever and I, I take on a lot all the time, but the, the word challenge just meant for us something that you could do something about. I feel like the word weakness often feels like I'm just not good at that and I can't do anything about it. Um, and sometimes with something that feels like a weakness, it's not about what you can do, it's about what others can do to help you with that. So a challenge can be met with someone else. Um, and so we changed that verbiage for us. Uh, I, like I love that, Leah, yes. About, a weakness yeah, is an opportunity for growth. Exactly, and weakness also has a very strong cultural lens. When we think about um, the, the fact that um, when something is considered weak, it's, it's often considered inferior. And that's another, um, reason why we were thinking we wanted to keep us in that self-awareness and that, you know, actualization as opposed to um, thinking of ourselves in a more of a limited mindset. So um, thank you for Leah for that piece, but we also want to recognize, you know, from a cultural lens, we have to recognize some, some of the terminology in which it has impact for others. The other important thing is with all these self-assessment tools, all of these questions and prompts that we're giving you, it's very important that we do not at any point consider them from a lens of good or not good. These are statements that we can make and we can experience and then we can rationalize later. And we're going to give you some questions and prompts to do that rationalization work um, with that great prefrontal cortex. But um, another piece of advice from Castle is that if you try to tie that statement to a personal experience, it becomes it gives you that context and that ability to actually feel and and fully sort of embrace that question. Um, so this is actually only the first piece of this uh, personal tool that Castle has developed. And the other pieces are actually in the resource links down below. If you'd like to open this, um, I will put that link for you in the chat. Uh, but the the self-awareness piece, that emotional self-awareness, accurate self-perception, self-confidence, optimism. These are the four areas that were wrapped into that self-awareness chunk of the tool. So we pulled these out for you just to think about. Um, and you'll notice on the right-hand side that it says rarely, sometimes, and often. So if we had all the time in the world, we'd go through each one. We'd really wanna give you the time to really check um, yes, rarely, yes, sometimes, yes, often, <laughs> and really think about those in context. I'm able to identify, recognize, and name my emotions in the moment. I will tell you what, my little friend um, Xander really pushed me yesterday in class, and I don't think I was fully able to identify all the emotions I was having until later. That context makes me able to say, often, often I do, but not always. <laughs> we have our moments, but um, what what Aris and I would like you to do at this time we have left is I'm not going to talk for two minutes and I'd like you to just um, look at these and think through them and just gut instinct right now. Are you more rarely? Are you more sometimes? Are you more often?
It's funny too, because in some of the comments we've seen as the webinar has gone on, seeing the positive and negative situations, experiences, letting you learn and grow. I think we're going to have some offense here, my friend, Reese. I think so too, <laughs> because as we look at a tool like this, it just gives us again, like we talked about that chance to look in the mirror and do that, that, that internal look and piece. So as we have on the screen here, we wanted to know, you know, as you're thinking about this, you know, were you surprised at any of the things that you that you may have said about yourself as you would take the time and mark such as an item? And then Ellen, the second question we'll be looking at. Like that confirmation, what you already know about yourself. Whenever you ask yourself to do a self-assessment or if you're working with a colleague or a student or whoever, and you're asking them to do some self-assessment, stopping and asking yourself first, like, is there anything that surprised me when I was doing this work? Is there anything I kind of already knew about myself? Those are just rungs on that ladder that builds that confidence in your own appraisal of your, of your sort of self-awareness. So the opt-in column, again, I don't think we'll be surprised if anything here on our slide, but again, when we think of something often, it's off, it's indicating our sense of our strengths. And so no, again, bad or good or right or wrong, just as um, I believe it was already put in the chat, you know, when we do that self-reflection and we get in that good practice, these are places again to identify what's going well and the things we want to keep and the kinds of things that again can strengthen or deepen our understanding of self and that's we want to you know give credit sometimes we can be hard on ourselves when we do a little a, a deep look at uh, who we are and so we want to make sure to, to accentuate the positive accentuate the things that are already going well we don't actually have a slide about the sometimes because i think that that's that sort of wiggly space in the middle, but we did um, pull some of those questions for rarely. Um, and I noticed in the chat, some people were saying that it's hard sometimes to really dig deeper and think through and, and feel everything um, in a in a cycle of emotion or in a moment. And we did not give you that time to contextualize, so we're sorry. But if there were any of those elements in that self-reflection that were rarely for you, um, these are our current, not weaknesses, but perhaps challenges, right? So and they talk about enhancing those areas. Um, and uh, I really love this, this word that keeps being used of competency, right? Like our ability to build that competency and the idea too that sometimes um, when we're able to identify a challenge in competency in ourselves, we can value it in someone else and they can help us in those situations, which is probably one of the most humbling elements of um, self-assessment. <laughs> and so you may see this slide and you go, here it is again. Um, we just wanna come back to, again, those statements that we shared with you earlier and, and intentionally we wanna remind us that we wanna, set aside time and, and be very intentional when we're doing any of this work about self-awareness. Um, it isn't something that can be rushed and it's actually better taken in small chunks when you're taking that time to pick, pick out the things that are going well, pick out the things that you are um, curious about yourself. And so although we only have an hour with you, we want to give you a, an over compassing way to maybe take this back and start that self work or visit the structure you currently use in your reflection process in your self growth and management so this, this piece is really an opportunity to come back and as you look at this list some of these we can talk about it and address very quickly and others we want to get more curious and spend more time um, thinking through and looking at all the options and challenges and opportunities a statement like this might make for us and these are only a few statements. So in that resources link, there's so many more opportunities to have additional um, work with that. So as you look at those and think about what we've been talking about so far this evening, um, wanted to know if you would put in the chat um, responses that as you hear someone make a statement. So now we're going away from the mirror and doing the window because as leaders in our organization, we do a lot of window work. If you think about those statements and you're hearing from someone else, you know, 
what might you say or what might you do that would help you better understand someone that you're working with or leading who may make one of those statements from the uh, appraisal that we share. I think it'd be really interesting to have conversations around these statements with fourth graders that I work with pretty closely in my building. I um, I'm already excited to try some of them out with them because in a moment, it's too hard to address those big feelings. But afterwards, we've been having these great conversations with some of those students. And I just imagine how structured um, conversations around prompts like this could really help them sort of soar and find that footing. And I love that in the chat, we're really talking about our day to day experiences. Um, our students are our most important factors. And the work that we do, we want to meet their needs. And sometimes it's hard. So thank you both for um, Kelly and Andrea, you know, being brave and telling us, you know, that's where, where, where we're working from. But speaking of which, we want to come back to where we started from the two frameworks in which tonight's webinar um, provided guidance. So our NEA leadership competency framework has seven competencies, but in particular, our tonight's focus was looking at the social emotional competency, the newer one. And again, reminding ourselves it's it's in the center for a reason to remind us that it's just as important and even more centralized place that we wanna start a lot of our work as we work around the other competencies as leaders. And that CASEL framework, all of these resources that are available on CASEL, they help us to identify the fact that if we don't do the work and we ask others to do it, it's not an authentic relationship. It's not a way for you to do the work that you need to do best. So taking that time for yourself and being vulnerable with others and sharing that work and modeling it and showing this is how I statements work. This is how I manage my life. I'm a person too. Um, and the strength that that gives us to overcome challenges and to share um, with one another, which is really lovely. So we're really happy um, if you weren't familiar with Castle, uh, that you'll have that as a resource now. And if you were familiar with Castle, that you can go back to it and just revel in all that great stuff and pull out those things that, that are most meaningful to you. Are we doing this leadership slide? Duff, do you want to take over or? Absolutely, Ellen. Okay. I mean, I'm, still, I'm still just sitting here looking at my notes and I've taken like several pages of notes. I just said it's powerful, powerful work. And I want to remind all of our members who are participating that that's why um, you have chosen in many instances to be a part of our big NEA family is because we're here to support you on, and on your leadership journey. And it makes it sound like NEA is some entity out there, but we are NEA. Arise and Ellen are members like all of you. I'm a member like all of you. We have staff that we employ to help us become the very best that we can be for our students. And so you can see that there's plenty of resources for you. Um, you can download or request the Leadership Competency Framework Booklet. We'll be happy to get you that. Um, take the online self-assessment and online courses and integrate leadership development into all aspects of your work. And I just absolutely love, we are the ones we have been waiting for. Again, so powerful, the self-assessment. I loved that, that there's, there are no weaknesses, rather, rather the challenges and that we must approach this from a strength mindset. You are all amazing. You do and you have done great and important work. Anishinaabe word is miigwech, which means thank you. So miigwech to thank you for participating and joining us. Miigwech to our facilitators and the NEA staff. And last but not least, be well, stay well. Thank you all. Miigwech, my friends. There's plenty of information on the slides for upcoming sessions. Um, please join the, the School Me podcast if you haven't done that yet. Um, I did that very recently for the first time and I'm, I'm hooked and I'm going back and I'm doing all of them. So I would highly recommend. Um, 
We also have uh, contact information if you want to reach out to us. And then we want to remind you that there are more slides. So other than what we just talked about, um, there are following slides that have great books, great resources, all the links that we use today so you don't have to hunt for them. Um, so we really encourage you to save that slideshow and share it with others. We made it for you, it's yours. Thank you for your membership. Um, and just make sure you, you know, shout out this is because of my union when you when you send it far and wide. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Awesome team. Thank you. Um, unflappable, despite all kinds of tech craziness. Thank you. Thank you. So we will say um, good night. It's 8 p.m. And we thank you. Please come back next month. We will have another great member led team talking about the self management competency. And the registration link will be up soon. So thank you all very much. And thank you, Duff, for your thoughtful comments at the end as well.